In this problem, our goal is to find the amount of energy stored within this spherical charge here that has a radius of R and a total charge of Q. Another way to do that is to find basically the amount of work that you'd have to do and that you'd have to put into the system if you were to slowly uh, create this charge um, charge distribution if you had like a little point charge and just bring it from infinity to here and then bring another one from infinity to here and just keep doing that over and over until you made this entire charge charge density right here and luckily we have a shortcut for this and that shortcut that we learned in the section that we're currently working with is that the work or the energy that's uh, needed to put into the system is equal to the integral of uh, rho times the the function for the potential for that system integrated over uh, volume right here. And uh, again, this is just the first part of the problem. We were told, we were hinted to use this, uh, um, this form right here in order to find the energy. And so we know that the, the, I guess the first thing that we need to do is to figure out what kind of, uh, what is this potential, right? So that potential, when specifically talking about in the, in the textbook, that's the, that's the potential of the system. And for us specifically, it's the potential for the, uh, uh, the spherical charge on the inside. And uh, I can't spell inside. Inside here. All right. And if we go back to, and it hinted, if you go back to problem 2.21 or uh, 28, uh, it told us to use that charge, that, that potential in order to kind of kickstart this problem so we don't have to redo it. And uh, I went back and I looked at my video explaining it, and this is what we found from my video. You can go ahead and watch it if you're wondering how we got to this point, but this is, uh, this is, this is the, uh, the potential we got. And now that I look back at it, I think I probably could have wrote it in a little bit different way. One way to rewrite this that's a little bit more elegant is uh let me just rewrite all this stuff that is not a four pi that is a pi epsilon naught one over r see for here you just uh you pull out a, a one sixth out of both of those right which would change this into a uh, a three and then you also distribute a uh uh, r squared from here into these two and you can work out the algebra but i'll go ahead and just jump to what i think is a more elegant answer and the reason why i think it's a more elegant answer is when you can try to keep these uh um these like the the variable version of uh the limit that you're working with so this is r and this is the the big r if you can keep these two at, you know a ratio of each other it kind of it's a little bit more physically intuitive and then we can take this a step further Oops, sorry, actually, um, this should be, like I said, I explicitly said it, but I didn't draw it. It should be a 1, 6 right here. All right, and then we can uh, further um, simplify things down right here. So this would be a uh, 2. All right, so now we go back, and we can throw this back into here. And, of course, our, uh, our row, since we were given Q, we can just divide the Q up over the volume that we have, which is the volume of a sphere with a radius of big R. Uh, and then now we can take all of these and integrate over spherical coordinates right here. An entire spherical differential sphere. Actually, I'm going to move this down one more. I think it might run into that. So we have uh, one half. And then I'm just going to pull all the constants out. These are all... Uh, these are all constants as the integral sees them, so I'll just keep those out in front. So that'll be three fourths Q over pi R cubed. All right, now we have our integral. We know it's gonna be a triple integral. And uh, I'll just go ahead and put the zeros right here. We'll get to it eventually. And now we're gonna go ahead and throw our, um, our potential in right here so we have one fourth q over pi epsilon naught r and then we have uh let's see here two one half right yep one half and then now we have our three minus r squared r squared and then of course your standard differential volume for integrating over spherical coordinates, d 
phi d theta. Okay, working from the inside out, so this would be the, this integral would be the limits of r, so we're going from zero to big R. This, this one is the limits of phi, and of course phi, we're gonna go to two pi. And finally for theta, we'll go from uh, um, zero to pi. All right, now let's clean this up a bit. Pull all the constants out in front. Let's see here. I'm just gonna pull all the numbers out front first. So we have a three and a two times a four times another four times a two. And all right, and now we have all the constants. So we have a double Q here. So we have a Q squared. We do have a, we have two pi's, four r's and one epsilon naught as it should be and then before I even write this as you can uh as you can tell the only variable in here is just little r right so that means that we can integrate over um pi and um phi or sorry over uh th theta and phi which all ends up being four pi and then all that's left is Uh, yeah, it was a balloon that just hit a fan in my house. I'm not sure if you heard it. It's all right. That's uh, the joy of having children. All right. Um, let's see here. Where was I? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So all that's left is 3 r over r squared. And now we have r squared here, dr. All right, now we can go ahead and let's see here. Let's go ahead and simplify some stuff. So there's a four here, so we can cancel out with a four here. And then we have a pi here, so we cancel out with a pi right over here. So we have just one pi left. And simplify everything down. That will be three over 16 for all those numbers. Q squared over a single pi r to the fourth epsilon naught. Make that a little bit prettier. All right, let's give it a bracket because we're gonna split up these. Uh, oh, we can just do it in parentheses. We're gonna split up this integral into two integrals because of this minus sign right here. So you have a zero to r of three r squared dr minus zero to r of r squared over r squared times r squared, which would just be r fourth dr. All right, now we'll go ahead and evaluate the integral. I'll just say this drops down right here. So this integral is pretty easy. It's r to the third over three, which is nice. And then this one, of course, is uh, well, let's r squared, but the actual integral ends up being r to the fifth over five. We're able to cancel some good stuff out here. This turns into a three. Scrolling up, and we'll, uh, we'll just rewrite everything. So now we have three over 16, q squared over, uh, let's see here, pi, epsilon naught. We'll move the r out here r to the fourth because we know we're going to cancel some stuff out we'll we'll pull a r cubed out of here since it's common to both and then one minus one fifth all right let's do some canceling so this all ends up canceling we have a single r left on the bottom and um, let's see here this whole thing can go into it becomes a four over five and since that's four or five, we'll change over the colors. We'll, we'll cancel out this four and turn this four into another, or this 16 into a four. And then finally, what we have, scroll up a little bit, is equal to three over 20 Q squared pi epsilon naught and uh, times R. All right, so that is the amount of energy that is stored in that spherical uh, that spherical charge distribution right there. So if you took every every little infinitesimally small um, uh, 
piece of charge, differential charge, and you just pull them all from infinity all to create that uh, that spherical that spherical charge. It would all end up being this amount of energy right here. And that's the that's just the first part of the problem.